you for calling the ASMR Help Desk. How may I help you today? You have reached our telephone book ordering line where I will list off some books and read a short description of the book and the author and then at the end you will have an opportunity to to place an order for any of the books that you found interesting. So let's go ahead and get started. Our first book for the evening is Pet by Akwiki Ameze. There are no monsters anymore, or so the children in the city of Lucille are taught. Jam and her best friend Redemption have grown up with this lesson all their lives. But when Jam meets Pet, a creature made of horns and colors and claws, who emerges from one of her mother's paintings and a drop of Jam's blood, she must reconsider what she's been told. Pet has come to hunt a monster, and the shadow of something grim lurks in Redemption's house. Jam must fight, not only to protect her best friend, but also to uncover the truth and the answer to the question, how do you save the world from monsters if no one will admit they exist? In their riveting and timely young adult debut, acclaimed novelist Akwiki Emeze asks difficult questions about what choices you can make when the society around you is in denial. Akwiki Ameze makes their young adult debut with Pet on the inaugural Make Me a World list, a 2018 National Book Foundation 5 Under 35 honoree. Their adult debut, Freshwater, continues to receive critical acclaim following rave reviews from the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, the New Yorker, and the Los Angeles Times, among others. Their sophomore adult novel, The Death of Vivikoji, was released in 2020 from Riverhead Books. Born in Amuehia and raised in Aba, Nigeria, Akweke currently resides in liminal spaces. I'll go ahead and read the back cover as well. The problem is, when you think you've been without monsters for so long, sometimes you forget what they look like, what they sound like, no matter how much remembering your education urges you to do. It's not the same when the monsters are gone. You're only remembering shadows of them, stories that seem to be limited to the pages or screens you read them from. Flat and dull things. So yes, people forget. But forgetting is dangerous. Forgetting is how the monsters come back. Next selection is Fireborn by Rosaria Munda. Annie and Lee were just children when a brutal revolution changed their world, giving everyone, even the lowborn, a chance to test into the governing class of dragon riders. Now they are both rising stars in the new regime, despite backgrounds that couldn't be more different. Annie's low-born family was
was executed by dragonfire, while Lee's aristocratic family was murdered by revolutionaries. Growing up in the same orphanage forged their friendship, and seven years of training have made them rivals for the top position in the dragon riding fleet. But everything changes when survivors from the old regime surface, bent on reclaiming the city. With war on the horizon, and his relationship with Annie changing fast, Lee must choose to kill the only family he has left, or to betray everything he's come to believe in, and Annie must decide whether to protect the boy she loves, or step up to be the champion her city needs. From debut author Rosario Munda comes a gripping adventure that calls into question what matters most, the family you were born into, or the one you've chosen. Rosario Munda grew up in rural North Carolina, where she climbed trees, read Harry Potter fan fiction, and taught herself Latin. She studied political theory at Princeton, and lives in Chicago with her husband and cat. The back jacket says, today it begins, today we will rise. Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds Will's older brother, Sean, has been shot, dead. Will feels a sadness so great he can't explain it but in his neighborhood there are the rules. Number one, crying, don't, no matter what. Number two, snitching, don't, no matter what. Number three, revenge, do, no matter what. But bullets miss, you can get the wrong guy, and there's always someone else who knows to follow the rules. Sixty seconds, seven floors, three rules, one gun. Jason Reynolds is crazy about stories. Jason Reynolds is also tired of being around young people who are tired of feeling invisible. So he writes books, a bunch of books, and even has won some awards. But none of them are as important as a young person saying they feel seen. The more that happens, the less tired Jason is. But either way, he'll still be crazy about stories, about you. Our next selection is Pachinko by Min Chin Lee. History is seldom kind. In Min Chin Lee's best-selling magisterial epic, four generations of a poor, proud immigrant family fight to control their destinies, exiled from a homeland they never knew. In the early 1900s, teenaged Sunja, the adored daughter of a crippled fisherman, falls for a wealthy stranger at the seashore near her home in Korea. He promises her the world, but when she discovers she is pregnant, and that her lover is married, she refuses to be bought. Instead, she accepts an offer of marriage from a gentle, sickly minister passing through on his way to Japan. But her decision to abandon her home and to reject her son's powerful father sets off a dramatic saga that will echo down through the generations. 
richly told and profoundly moving, Pachinko is a story of love, sacrifice, ambition, and loyalty. From the bustling street markets to the halls of Japan's finest universities, to the pachinko parlors of the criminal underworld. Lee's complex and passionate characters, strong, stubborn women, devoted sisters and sons, fathers shaken by moral crisis, survive and thrive against the indifferent arc of history. Min Jin Lee's debut novel, Free Food for Millionaires, was one of the top ten novels of the year for The Times London, NPR's Fresh Air, and USA Today. Her short fiction has been featured on NPR's Selected Shorts. Her writings have appeared in The Times Literary Supplement, Condé Nast's Traveler, The Times London, Vogue, Travel and Leisure, Wall Street Journal, New York Times Magazine, and Food and Wine. Her essays and literary criticisms have been anthologized widely. She served as a columnist for Chosen Ilbo, the leading paper of South Korea. She lives in New York with her family. Our next, our next selection is Slay by Brittany Morris. By day, 17-year-old Kira Johnson is an honor student, a math tutor, and one of the only black kids at Jefferson Academy. But at home, she joins hundreds of thousands of black gamers who duel worldwide as Nubian personas in the secret multiplayer online role-playing card game, Slay. No one knows Kiera is the game developer. Not her friends. Not her family. Not even her boyfriend, Malcolm, who believes video games are a distraction to keep the black man from becoming great. But when a teen in Kansas City is murdered over a dispute in the Slay world, news of the game reaches mainstream media, and Slay is labeled a racist, exclusionist, violent hub for thugs and criminals. Even worse, Kiara faces potentially being sued for anti-white discrimination, and an anonymous troll infiltrates the game threatening to harass all the players and take over. Driven to save the only world in which she can be herself, Kiera must preserve her secret identity and harness what it means to be unapologetically black in a world intimidated by blackness. But can she protect her game without losing herself in the process? Brittany Morris is the author of Slay. She is also the founder and former president of the Boston University Creative Writing Club. She holds a Bachelor of Arts in Economics. Brittany spends her spare time playing video games, slaying at DDR, and enjoying the Seattle rain from her apartment. She lives with her husband, Stephen, who would rather enjoy the rain from a campsite in the woods because he hasn't played enough horror games. On the back cover, black gamers go through this every day, I remind myself. I'm just part of gaming while black. Racism crops up in so many places. I should be used to it by now. But I shouldn't have to be. Not here. Not in Slay. I'm here to defend that right to safety. To defend this space. I am a queen, and this is my game.
Our next selection is Midnight at the Electric by Jody Lynn Anderson. Adri has been handpicked to live on Mars, but just before launch, she discovers the journal of a girl who lived in her Kansas farmhouse more than a hundred years ago. Amid the fear and uncertainty of the Dust Bowl. In the same house years earlier, Catherine discovers letters from a mysterious woman who her mother refuses to discuss, but who seems inextricably tied to them. Three young women, whose lives are intertwined across thousands of miles of multiple generations, all defined by hope, love, determination, and the small but crucial moments that determine one's fate. Jody Lynn Anderson is the New York Times best-selling author of Peaches, Tiger Lily, The Vanishing Season, Midnight at the Electric, and the popular Maybird Trilogy. She lives in Asheville, North Carolina, with her husband, her son, and an endless parade of stray pets. Our next book is Amari and the Knight Brothers by B. B. Alston. Amari Peters has never stopped believing her missing brother Quinton is alive. Not even when the police told her otherwise, or when she got in trouble for standing up to bullies who said he was gone for good. So when she finds a ticking briefcase in his closet containing a nomination for a summer tryout at the Bureau of Supernatural Affairs, she's certain the secretive organization holds the key to locating Quinton. If only she can wrap her head around the idea of magicians, fairies, aliens, and other supernatural creatures all being real. Now she must compete for a spot against kids who've known about magic their whole lives. No matter how hard she tries, Amari can't seem to escape her intense scrutiny and doubt, especially once her own supernaturally enhanced talent is deemed illegal. With an evil magician threatening the supernatural world, and her classmates thinking she's an enemy, Amari has never felt more alone, but if she doesn't stick it out and pass the tryouts, she might never find out what happened to Quentin. B. B. Alston lives in Lexington, South Carolina. Amari and the Knight Brothers is his debut middle-grade novel. When not writing, he can be found eating too many sweets and exploring country roads to see where they lead. I find that I relate with Mr. Austin. Our next selection is Nosferatu, but I'm going to spell it because it's not like you would expect. It's N-O-S, the numeral four, A, the numeral two. Like you would put it on a license plate. It's by Joe Hill. Victoria Vic McQueen has an uncanny knack for finding things. When she rides her bicycle over the rickety bridge in the woods near her house, she always emerges in the places she needs to be. Vic doesn't tell anyone about her unusual ability. Charles Talent Manx has a gift of his own. He le 
likes to take children for rides in his 1938 Rolls-Royce Wraith with the vanity plate Nosferatu. In the Wraith, he and his innocent guests can slip out of the everyday world to an astonishing playground of amusements he calls Christmas Land. Mile by mile, the journey across the highway of Charlie's twisted imagination transforms his precious passengers, leaving them as terrifying and unstoppable as their benefactor. And then comes the day when Vic goes looking for trouble and finds her way, inevitably, to Charlie. Now the only kid ever to escape Charlie's twisted imagination is all grown up and desperate to forget. But Charlie Manx hasn't stopped thinking about Vic McQueen. On the road again, he won't slow down until he's taken his revenge. Joe Hill is the New York Times best-selling author of Horns and Heart-Shaped Box, and the prize-winning story collection 20th Century Ghosts. He also is the Eisner Award-winning writer of an ongoing comic book series, Lock and Key. Our next book is Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. Dana, a modern black woman, is celebrating her 26th birthday with her new husband when she is snatched abruptly from her home in California and transported to the antebellum south. Rufus, the white son of a plantation owner, is drowning, and Dana has been summoned to save him. Dana is drawn back repeatedly through time to the slave quarters, and each time the stay grows longer, more arduous, and more dangerous, until it is uncertain whether or not Dana's life will end, long before it has a chance to begin. Octavia E. Butler was the author of many novels, including Dawn, Wild Seed, and Parable of the Sower. She was the recipient of the MacArthur Fellowship and twice won the Nebula and Hugo Awards. And our final book for the evening is Under Major Domo Minor by Patrick DeWitt. A love story, an adventure story, a fable without a moral, and an ink-black comedy of manners. Under Major Domo Minor is Patrick DeWitt's long-awaited follow-up to the internationally best-selling and critically acclaimed novel the Sisters Brothers. Lucian, Lucy Minor, is the resident odd duck in the bucolic hamlet of Bury. Friendless and loveless, young and aimless, Lucy is a compulsive liar, a sickly weakling in a town famous for producing brutish giants. Then Lucy accepts employment assisting the majordomo of the remote, foreboding Castle von Ox, attending to his new post as under majordomo. Lucy soon discovers the place harbors many dark secrets, not least of which being the whereabouts of the castle's master, Baron von Ox. He also encounters the colorful people of the local village, thieves, Madmen, aristocrats, and Clara, a delicate beauty for whose love he must compete with the exceptionally handsome soldier, Adolphus. Thus begins a tale of polite theft, bitter heartbreak, domestic mystery, and cold-blooded murder in which every aspect of humanity is laid bare for our hero to observe. 
under Major Domo Minor is an adventure, a mystery, and a searing portrayal of rural alpine bad behavior. But above all, it is a love story, and Lucy must be careful, for love is a violent thing. Patrick DeWitt is the author of the critically acclaimed Ablutions, Notes for a Novel, as well as The Sisters Brothers, which was shortlisted for the Booker Prize. Born in British Columbia, he has also lived in California and Washington, and now resides in Portland, Oregon. So those are our selections for the evening. Do any of those sound interesting to you? Mm hmm Well, certainly, I can do that. And the... Oh, you want that one as well? Okay. I can do that as well. Did, were there any that you wanted me to read over again or talk a little bit about? Oh, the, I can say my recommendation, because I spend so much time here at the help desk, I, I can't read as much as I would like. These are all on my to read list, but I can say that the Nosferatu by Joe Hill is one that I'm most excited about reading, um, if for no other reason than I am a big fan of the comic book series he writes, Lock and Key. Um, I actually was able to meet the artist for that, and, um, and I, I really enjoy that, so I'm looking forward to reading this Nosferatu by Joe Hill. I also am interested in this Amari and the Night Brothers. That looks very interesting to me. Because... It just seems to have a very interesting take on the School of Magic type scenario. The other one that I'm interested myself in reading is Long Way Down. Um, the concept of this book on the back cover, it says 60 seconds, seven floors, three rules, one gun. The general concept of this book, uh, as it has been told to me, is it's, as it says, um, Will's older brother, was killed. So he goes to get his gun and to seek revenge. And the elevator, this entire book, takes place in the elevator on the ride down. So it, it seems very interesting to me. And also, I should note, the entire book is um, poetry. So it's not, a, it's not standard prose. So, t typically, I'm not a fan of poetry. I, I prefer prose, but the concept of this was so compelling that I, uh, I'm looking forward to this one as well. Okay. Yeah, I can certainly... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've added them to your list. Do you have any other questions for me today? Mm hmm Yes. Well, depending um, if this is a popular service, then we will happily provide more uh, options. Um, it, it's all based on how interested people seem and how many calls we get. If you do have, if you do enjoy this, 
I recommend that you leave us a comment as feedback and let us know if you like it. And if you do, also if you had any books that you would like to have us include, we do have uh, a member on staff who her entire job is uh, reading and selecting these books. And uh, we just hired her on and and uh, if if there is interest, then we can keep her uh, around to continue selecting books. If that is something that you're interested in, please let us know either in a comment uh, the the comment, the feedback is down below. Um, so you can do that. And, uh, and if you did enjoy it, also like, subscribe, and, and let your friends know about us. So thank you so much for calling, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. This show is part of the CIP Network, where we inspire creativity one episode at a time.